The House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. You are back in the House of Mystery, and it's a mysterious world indeed. I'm Al Warren, of course. Mr. David Martino is co-hosting. I am here, present. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into something really, really good today. Uh, we're going to talk about Off the Deep End, Jerry and Becky Falwell, and the <laughs> collapse of an evangelical dynasty. So uh, Mr. Mark Ebner is the author in here. So how are you doing, Mark? I'm the messenger. The book is by Giancarlo Granda, and uh, I'm doing okay. And uh, I, I, I think given that this is the house of mystery, I'd like to open up with the fact that it is no mystery that Jerry Falwell Jr. is a cock. <laughs> Remember that word? Remember how uh, the hard right used to try and disgrace liberals with calling us snowflakes and cucks and all that? And by the way, I'm just speaking not even knowing where you guys stand politically. It doesn't matter to me. But they called us cucks. And then we come to find, and I only wish I could do a new show with a split screen to call him a cuckold. To his face. Well, I've been called a cock before, but not a cock. Oh, I, I've been called all manner of things, but you have to understand that, you know, this is a guy, Jerry Falwell Jr., the heir apparent to the moral majority ramblings of his father, Jerry Falwell Sr., uh, a real estate guy. Ring a bell? Sound familiar? Uh, Basically, a godless creature who wound up inheriting the largest evangelical university in the country. And, uh, you know, in, I don't know, 15 short years, 10 of them, uh, I mean, well, I would say seven of them, they spent in uh, this affair, if you will, with Giancarlo Granda otherwise known as, unfortunately known as the pool boy, um, you know, they, they, they spent that, you know, the better part of a third of this kid's life, starting with bird dog dogging this kid while he was enjoying probably the best jobs in the world, being a pool, pool attendant at the Fountain Blue Hotel in South Beach, uh, you know, I mean, I, when I, when I found out about him, I was like, party on. What a great job for a 20 year old, right? <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, yet at the same time, he's kind of been stuck with this Appalachian pool boy. People don't understand that since then, this kid, who was, uh, when he was working at the Fountain Blue, was putting his way through uh, Miami-Dade Community College. He since has finished there, got a bachelor's degree, and now he is has a master's degree in real estate finance and development from Georgetown University. In spite of all the trauma that this sociopathological couple, Jerry Falwell Jr. and Becky Falwell, put him through. From the top, they bird-dogged him at the Fountain Blue. They stalked him. Becky was taking photos of him. He looked over his shoulder. He saw this hot cougar, for lack of a better term, <laughs> you know, peering over her, her sunglasses at him. She beckoned him over. Uh, he grabbed a minute with her uh, on one of the $150 a day gay beds at that place. And she said, you know, something to the effect of, uh, you know, younger girls don't know anything. Blah, blah, blah. Would you like to come up to my room? Now, 20 years old, handsome kid, working at the Fountain Blue. What would your 
uh, what would your response to be to such an invitation? Probably what Giancarlo, uh, uh, his reaction was, uh, fuck yeah, who can blame him, right? Well, uh, they didn't want to go up to their $1,500 a night suite in the Tresor Tower of the Fountain Blue. Uh, in fact, what uh, they suggested, they being Becky at the time, was that they uh, meet up at the Days Inn down the street and, uh, you know, to avoid any scrutiny if anyone recognized him as working there going up to their room. They went up to the room. And uh, the one proviso, I guess, was before they went up was Becky uh, saying to uh, Giancarlo, there's just one thing, though. My husband likes to watch. All right. The kid's taken aback. What is this? But he was still up for an adventure. He called his sister. She said, go for it. Just don't get, you know your head caved in by serial killers, you know? <laughs> and he went up there and uh, they did the deed while Jerry Jr. watched. And uh, so, be you know, so began an odyssey whereby they groomed him, they exploited him, they went into business with him. To this day, Alan, Giancarlo Grando owns a quarter share in a multi-million dollar piece of property, multi-use property in South Beach. They went into business with him. But underlying all that, you know, you think this would be a dream come true for a kid who, as I mentioned, had his sights set on uh, a career in real estate to begin with. You'd think that this would be like, you know, uh, Christmas time in June for him. Yet at the same time, they had other plans in mind, you know, by, by tying him to this real estate deal by Jerry, the cuck in the corner, videotaping all their encounters. Uh, you know, this became, this became unspoken black man. You know? In other words, they owned his ass. And, you know, it got to the point, as you'll read in Off the Deep End, that uh, Giancarlo finally had to just, and I'm quoting him in his, you know, last text before he went fully public, and, he, you know, he said, I got to take the kamikaze route. You know, this was a kid who never even had a proper relationship with someone his age. So there's my, uh, you know, there's my diatribe, Alan, and uh, I'm happy to hear your thoughts or have you pry a few more out of me before uh, well, well, our time well, is couldn't up they here. couldn't they have chosen something better than the days in <laughs> <laughs> come on <laughs> you know I, I know it that's a tough one but i gotta say um this is actually a day's in uh on south beach and you know and, and it's not your like off the interstate no tell motel situation i mean it, it, it's at a grander scale so I will say this, of all the days ins I've ever visited, this one, it's right up there. And I do a lot of traveling. But, yeah, valid question. Well, you know, I'm wondering, so uh, why would they want to tie him in and get so involved with him, like tie him and get him into the business and stuff? Because, you know, you're doing a, a sexual friend with benefits or whatever that they saw it as. Uh, and they're doing this regularly. Why get them involved in your in your business? Part of me wants to say that they realized, you know, that Giancarlo Grande was was and is smarter than a lot of us. Uh, the kid had good instincts. I, I'm saying they saw in him uh, a lot of potential. However, uh, they weren't going to give up this affair. Uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. It, would not give up uh, his wife attaining her, you know, satisfaction by any means necessary. 
And uh, if it meant, meant going into partnership with him, so be it. He did it. But, you know, in many ways, the irony of this is, is he picked the right guy with great sensibilities in real estate. Um, so, but on the other hand, their plans for him as they, you know, gallivanted around to, you know, various exotic locales and, you know, just uh, wined and dined him. I mean, for God's sakes, Alan, Giancarlo met his former idol, Donald Trump, and had him sign a copy of his, uh, his copy of Art of the Deal. So this was essentially all part of the grooming process. Now you think, oh, lucky kid. Well, you know, at the same time, This is a kid who hadn't even figured out his politics yet, you know. So, uh, and and now he's flying around on a private jet, uh, you know, with the Falwells and company. And, uh, you know, his head is legitimately spun by this, uh, you know, to the point where um, it just got to be too much with what he had to barter. You know, his sex, his soul, everything for these people, you know, and, and yes, the grooming factor was they wanted him in the family. You know, they literally wanted him to move to Lynchburg, Virginia, perhaps, you know, get a degree from Liberty. You know, the, 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 what's amazing to me is, is, is that, you know, somewhere inside of himself, Giancarlo realized how wrong this all was, and uh, he managed to bail because, uh, you know, if you trace Liberty University and the radicalization of Christians at that university, you know, it's, it's, it's really frightening to think that, you know, he could have been next. You could have traced him all the way up the steps of the Capitol on January 6th, had he followed through with their insidious plan for him. Um, right out of the Nazi playbook, I, I might say, because I don't want to give uh, Jerry Falwell too much airtime here, only because, you know, it's like Giancarlo says, I'm like, where was uh, uh, wh- where was Jerry Falwell Jr. at the time? Oh, he he was the cuck in the corner, you know, so be it, you know, and if you really want to get technical, he was also what's known as, and trust me, I've been studying cuck theory, <laughs> um, he was also a cleanup cuck. Any idea what that means? No, but I like to hear. Well, it's basically, it's uh, a cuckold who willfully goes in for sloppy seconds. How's that? Oh, Okay. He's getting hence <laughs> clean up cuck. I know it sounds, uh, you know, but it is exactly it, it, that is exactly what he was. So I don't have much to say about him. Did he manage to turn around Liberty University's uh, financial status when uh, he inherited the presidency and the chancellorship of that university? He did. He made, you know, uh, by creating his very own little Trump University, uh, aka Liberty University online. It's a really interesting Ponzi scheme, in my opinion, the way that the online, uh, enrollment at Liberty actually supports the physical campus and all its ornaments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, by the way, what's real, I, I want to, I, I, I do want to stress, you know, I'm joking around about Jerry being a cuck, but this, honestly, at the end of the day, this isn't about kink shaming anybody. You know, this is yeah, about like I said, you know, you were calling us cucks for, you know, for what seemed like ages. And now the tables have turned. So, Jerry, you're a cuck. <laughs> Becky, in, you're a sociopath. And uh, 
da, 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 da. What else can I do for you, Al? Well, was was he the only one? Were they doing this with other guys too that you know about? Well, well, actually, great. There's a story. I believe it ran in Politico, and uh, no, of course, this wasn't the first time. The first uh, dance with Becky Falwell. Um, she is credibly alleged to have snuck into her son Trey's band member. Uh, she she had uh, they had two sons, Trey and uh, Wesley Falwell, both uh, the heirs apparent uh, to whatever they've squandered. Let's put it that way. Uh, but Becky, at one point, uh, just, I guess Trey had his, dr the drummer from his band on a sleepover at their estate in Good, Virginia, about 30 miles outside of the Lynchburg. And she took it upon herself to sneak into that kid's bedroom and, uh, start, uh, performing unsolicited oral sex on this kid. And if you go to the stories uh, about this, you will find out uh, that th this kid was literally traumatized by that. Now, the, you know, the bro in us would say, ah, oh, how could anyone get traumatized over a BJ from a cougar? Well, he never asked for it. And this was the first lady of Liberty University. And, you know, honest to God, he felt like Monica Lewinsky, you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it, uh, this, uh, you know, so that is the most outstanding version of that. I uh, also talked to a desk clerk at another hotel, the Falwells Frequent in Miami Beach, uh, the Lowe's Hotel. Talked to a desk clerk there named Omar. I don't think he's still there. Uh, but she told, he told me that Becky tried to solicit him for sex in much the same, uh, manner that they, uh, they, they got Giancarlo Grand. Now, uh, you know, so those are two examples. Then there's another guy. Uh, I, I'm not going to mention his name for the simple reason that, you know, he, the guy's litigious as hell. And he uh, actually had a fa failed lawsuit against Reuters for expressing the same. But this guy is a gym owner in uh, Lynchburg and basically got into some uh, apparently shady dealings with uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. in exchange for whatever he may or may not have been doing uh, to, how can I say, it, please... Becky Falwell, Jerry's wife. Um, you know, for your listeners, I just encourage them to look that up, that up, and they will find out that uh, just in my cursory sort of like, you know, looking into her past, uh, you know, we have a hat trick of these alleged affairs, and certainly the fact of. Um, the relationship with John Connolly. So the answer, short answer, yeah, she'd been around the block a few times. Well, you know, did did Fowell take part with sex with these these guys too, did, or was he just filming them? And well, see, in? that's the thing. Uh, I believe it was uh, Michael Cohen who somehow inserted himself in all this to the point where. Uh, we actually had, we gave Michael Cohen his own bonus chapter in Off the Deep End. <laughs> and, uh, I think it's worth the price of the book for that alone. In fact, if you can, if you have a book handy and you can guess which chapter is dedicated to Michael Cohen, you win a prize. <laughs> uh, to be determined later. Uh, did he physically participate? Was there any, uh, uh, sort of, uh, gay, uh, addition to this scenario? Uh, for Giancarlo, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It was bad enough that, you know, this goofy drunk guy was in the corner, 
uh, you know, and I guess he sort of got used to that. But uh, as far as anything else went, uh, no, there was no homosexual activity whatsoever between the players here. Oh. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, well, not only that, but the, that, that would destroy the whole cuck theory. You know, and I, and again, I, I, I don't want to, uh, bore your listeners by explaining what I know about cuckolding. There's plenty of it on the internet, but you know, the idea is, is that, you know, the husband watches his wife getting railed. And I guess the satisfaction and all that is at the end of the day, she's coming home with me, you know, and you know, that's the kink, I guess. Uh, but as far as, uh, John Carlo being in any kind of physical relationship that Jerry Falwell was involved in, absolutely not. Well, that's too bad. And, and listen, honestly, I wouldn't shame him if he was. No, no. I'd like to see yeah. pictures. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I've, I've kept some pictures. Perhaps we shall use them as door prizes. I think one of the fortuitous things about doing this book with Giancarlo was, you know, he wound up with a journalist to work on the book with him. So that's why I speak so freely about things that uh, might otherwise seem sensitive for the simple reason that I went into this project. I was introduced to Giancarlo uh, by Billy Corbin, uh, a documentary director out of Miami, of course. I mean, uh, Florida being the state that just keeps on giving. I can't tell you how many times I've been to Florida on crazy stories and books and that sort of thing. But uh, um, Billy Corbin uh, was going to make a documentary. Uh, that documentary, have you seen the trailer yet for God Forbid? No. Oh, look it up. God Forbid, Hulu, November 1st. Uh, this is Billy Corbin. He's uh, Edward R. Morrow, award-winning uh, director of Cocaine Cowboys, and you can look up the rest of his resume. This is a guy I've been, I've known for, you know, probably going on two decades now. And basically he calls me up and he says, Ebner, you want to meet Giancarlo Granda? I'm like, who? And he's like the pool boy. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like the kid at Christmas that Giancarlo was around that pool. I'm like, fuck yeah, <laughs> I want to meet him. And we met telling me a story that was so incredible that uh, we have the added bonus of me reporting out everything that is in this book to the point where I can get on your show and stand by it 100%. That's just a luxury that we both stumbled into. You know, one of my first calls was to Jerry Falwell Jr. I wish I had the audio for you. Maybe that'll be another dog door prize because we we both were uh ag acknowledged that we were recording the call and uh he said to me i i can't even imitate you know this hillbilly gatsby if i tried you know but basically he was saying giancarlo grando will be sitting in a federal prison and i'm just sort of you know you can hear me nodding my head on the phone and and he said, and I might add, paraphrasing, you could be abetting him. And, you know, I kind of took that as a threat. But then on the other hand, I just let him ramble. And I realized just what a stumble bum this guy is. And uh, so, you know, we had a 20-minute conversation. I said, look, Jerry, tell Becky I'm on my way to Lynchburg, okay? Right in the middle of the pandemic, screw it. I'm going to Lynchburg, and I would like to sit down with you guys. And that's how it was with everybody from, you know, people that, uh, you know, the kind of reprehensible faction of administrators and some educators loosely thrown into air quotes at Liberty University. I went to all of them, and uh, no surprise, uh, you know, that's the way it is. You know, you have, I've done my due diligence. 
your silence speaks volumes. And the folks that did speak to me on Jerry's side, you know, were either full of shit or were, uh, you know, trying to bargain with me. You know, in other words, like, can we go off the record? And I'm like, nah, I've been in this game too long to make deals. Either you answer the questions or you sit down and deal with the consequences. And today is publication day for Off the Deep End, Jerry and Becky Powell, and the collapse of an evangelical dynasty by John Carlo Granda with Mark Ebner out today. Amazon.com and all major bookstores. It's the perfect read, by the way, for an airplane flight cross country. <laughs> um, it's, it's short. It, it, you know, I mean, the kids, you know, he's only like 31, 32 years old now. Um, so, you know, doing a survivor's memoir, mo- memoir of this type, you got to understand it's going to be a tight factual book that you will have in your hands if you haven't been fondling it yet well there's been a lot of fondling going on here uh hey are the videos out yet yeah what 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 the videos like the uh god forbid the hulu documentary that has the executive producer stamp of adam mckay on it has that been out yet november 1st that drops so we got a good bookend here for sure uh yeah i'm in that uh, I would uh, I would definitely find a way to post the uh, trailer. Like I said, it's very powerful, and uh, then it just it becomes transcendent when you see the whole thing uh, on the screen. And uh, there are going to be millions upon millions of uh, eyeballs on that because Hulu's behind this a hundred percent. In fact, it, I may be mistaken, but I think they're throwing a billboard up in Times Square. So one hand feeds the other, and this is the perfect storm. Knock wood, I hope. What do you, what do you hope ends up out of this? What do you, what do you hope happens? Well, I, 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 personal, uh, personally, I hope that, uh, Becky Falwell and, uh, Jerry Falwell are permanently deplatformed, uh, mainly because, you know, all the, the lies that they accuse John Carlo of, they are guilty, uh, 10x to anything that, you know, he regrets saying or doing. And believe me, his regrets are in the book. His remorse is in the book. The psychological damage that they did to this kid is in the book. Yet at the same time, it's his truth. For God's sakes, the kid just wants to reclaim his name, Giancarlo Granda. You know, uh, you know, as much as we want to hashtag pool boy, uh, this is a kid that I've grown to admire. In fact, you know, to me, uh, he reminds me of a Kennedy. He's just charismatic. He's brilliant. And, uh, you know, I've worked with him for over two years on this volume. And, uh, you know, I, I, I could not have picked a better collaborator. Jesus, Alan, what was your question again? <laughs> uh, just what you, what you, what you hoped happened at the end of it. Like, the, you know, and you were saying how Falwell goes down. So Falwell, you know, he's already down. But the thing is, I, I use the word deplatform because it was at the tip of my tongue. But the point is, these are very follow. Uh, these are uh, very, very powerful people, nonetheless, you know, by virtues of their bank account and whatever standing they have left in the uh, evangelical community, such as it is, they can't get their story straight. You know, they've made false accusations about Giancarlo Granda, which are beyond reprehensible. And I hope when, uh, you know, I I hope at some point Giancarlo uh, sues them for defamation, you know, because simply there was a Vanity Fair article that came out. I won't mention the author's name because, frankly, I'm personally disappointed with him. I've worked with him before. But in that story, Becky says that on their last sexual encounter, he sexually assaulted her against her will. She didn't want it. Well, guess what? 
the evidence of how much she enjoyed that is, of course, on Jerry Falwell's iPhone. He filmed the whole thing. So if he, you know, if he was filming a rape, put it up on the screen. Let's see it. She was not only there for that last time and, you know, willing, a willing participant, you know, she literally arm wrestled Giancarlo into that, uh, escapade while his family was sleeping in one of the guest rooms. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, to further prove the point and how egregious that allegation is, four months later, and I have this evidence, Jerry and Becky, with uh, Jerry filming, did a FaceTime with Giancarlo. And in that FaceTime, she does a strip tease and beckons him, totally nude, touching herself, uh, to all the places in their home where Giancarlo had railed her. You know what I'm saying? So, so this was four m months after the alleged incident where she claims that he sexually assaulted her. So her claim is right out the window. Okay. And to add insult to injury, and I told you, stumble bum Jerry Falwell can't keep his story straight. A follow-up interview was done with the New Yorker. The author of that, gosh, I, I'm trying to remember her name. This is embarrassing. R regardless, the, the, the journalist who was interviewing them asked them about that alleged sexual assault. And honest to God, Jerry said on the record, we just made that up to try and kill the book. Okay, so he he blew his own wife's claim out of the water. This is a guy who, under the guise of trying to protect his wife, has been throwing her under the bus at any given opportunity to save his own ass, and it's just not going to work. What do I want to happen with them? Well, he's already been relieved of his job at... at uh, uh, Liberty University, you know, geez, you know, finally the board got its shit together and shit canned him. But at the same time, that doesn't do all the damage that he did, starting with throwing the evangelical vote to Donald Trump in a deal that was cooked up with, surprise, Michael Cohen. This is a, a book to get. And of course, Mark Ebner is uh, part of it. He's you're always in these wild things. Um, yeah, I know. I've spent a career t telling other people's stories, which has led me to believe that uh, that my own story can't be that interesting. Otherwise, I would have done a memoir myself. But, uh, you know, it is uh, it is what it is, and uh, I defer to stories that are more fascinating than my own, for sure. And well, uh, someone just Greg needs to do your story. That's all. <laughs> One day, One yeah, day. yeah, journalist, PI, ex-drug addict, uh, what else? Uh, you know, everything I, everything I divulged about myself when Scientology was coming after me. And, you know, that reminds me, you know, I don't want to ignore the cult issue around this whole story. You know, yeah. uh, you know, in the ways that they tried to Silence, John Carlo Grande. You ever heard of Darvo? D A R V O. I, I think so, but I don't know what that. If you look it up, Don, Donald Trump will be footnoted, I'm sure, on the Wikipedia for that. But Darvo is deny, attack, and reverse the order of victim and offender. You know, so anything that you know, it's that classic cult move. You know, very Scientological, but it's that classic cult move of just flipping this, trying to flip the script on your critics. In this case, it didn't work. And Giancarlo is the proud off, author of Off the Deep End, Jerry and Becky Fowell, and the collapse of an evangelical dynasty in bookstores now and on Amazon.com. Everywhere from the William Morrow imprint at Harper Collins. Well, geez, I don't have to give an out, out go. That's just does it all. Well, 
Mark hey, Ogner, my I pleasure. appreciate everything. And uh, Alan, anytime. Watch your email uh, box for uh, little uh, Easter eggs. I'll send your way. I really appreciate you having me uh, launching this book. always first interview out. And I noticed we've only been on for 40 minutes. If you want to go on, we can go on. Uh, but it's all in the pages. And I hope your listeners, uh, you know, uh, just give this book a chance. Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, as much as we like to joke, at the end of the day, I feel like this is some of the most important work I've ever done. Yeah, but, you know, the only thing with this sort of stuff is um, – <laughs> Nothing really ever happens to people like this, you know, like Falwell Jr. or anybody that's got some sort of a stat, you know, status, you know, in, in evangelicals or in politics and things like that. Nothing really happens to them, you know, like they. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like I described it better in the book, I think, but I can't even remember what I wrote. I'm such an old stoner, but. Uh, I will tell, I guess I gotta read the thing, but I will say this. What they do is they take their fortunes, what's left of them, and the same thing that Donald Trump would be doing down at Mar, Mar a Lago, they're doing it their estate outside Lynchburg. You know, they're closing ranks and I guess trying to hang on to what they have. But in terms of ratio, uh, in this of, you know, the Internet speaks and social media speaks, they're done. They're cooked. So when you say nothing happens to them, you know, just, you know, with your jauntiest eye, Alan, watch for any, you know, frail response to this work that comes from their camp and watch it wither on the vine. Well, there you have it. Again, Mark Ebner, thank you for being here. Anytime, Alan. Thank you. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show is over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. Good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.